Hey there everybody, I'm Embrix and I'm here with the biggest Lego Ninjago movie set ever. This is the Lego Ninjago City. Now, uh, this thing um, is huge and it's filled with so many references. Now, I made a video before this showing all the references and really just translating everything. So if you're interested in that, go check that video out. It should be the one before this. Or just search Embrix Ninjago City translation and references or something like that. But uh, let's get into the review of this. Uh, now, I'm just going to be pointing out some references as we go. Again, if you want all of them, check that video out. But just look at this. This is gorgeous. Just before I really get into everything, just look how it looks all together. This looks so amazing, and I love it. I couldn't have hoped for more. But uh, that's like the scene that everyone usually sees. Here's another view from this side angle. It's all built up on a... 32 by 32 base plate. Here's another angle. Now here's the one that most of the boxes don't show you. Just the outside. Now a lot of people might be like, oh, then that's sort of a waste, but I actually like this because I've, uh, I've sort of played around with this and it's very fun to just pose, uh, pose ninjas all over that. So yeah, I, I'm actually happy about this space, though none of the pictures really advertise it. Uh, much obviously I still think that it's okay and this set is great and I'll talk about price and value more at the end so yeah um that's pretty much it for the the thing how it looks together so to really review this um, before I do that I just want to say that uh, this is bigger than the Death Star you can see it uh, size to a figure this thing is pretty huge but before we really uh, get into the room i want to show you how it splits up and opens into all its different sections so this right here which is the top try to get a bit of light comes off this piece right here and then we have another piece this one that also comes out then lloyd's apartment comes off and the roof comes off don't worry we're going to be taking a look at all these starting from the bottom then this whole sort of uh, sushi bar section comes off the really roof of Ninjago City. And then this whole uh, shopping floor, as I call it, comes off. Yep, so there's really easy access and it's really easy to move this. This whole thing comes off right here. And a uh, word of caution, I did this mistake where when I wanted to take this floor off, this uh, second to last uh, floor, the second floor up, I, tr I held here and then I held here, but this came out so the whole thing just fell. So really just remove this before you do that. And then this comes off. And we're not done yet. More stuff still comes off. So try to get a bit of light in there. This comes off and this comes off. So yeah, there's like, nine pieces major pieces that come up and then you know roofs of shops or just the roof of lloyd's lloyd's house comes off so yeah 10 major pieces that's separate i just wanted to show you how that worked now let's take a look at this bottom floor so what i've noted just uh, just off the bat of building this is that um the bottom floor is a lot more traditional and then the higher it goes uh, the more modern uh in my opinion so there was so much fine detail really just put into this like look we have two support columns this one is different than this one like and this is a pretty nice build in and of itself you got a sign there forgot what it says so it's probably not important and then just look um at this right here we have a little bit of grass and i love this technique used here they use black to show deeper places and then green to show sort of the moss and all and then, uh, of course, we're going to take a look at the figures last. Like, look, we even have this phone booth right here. We have this, and it's all one piece, surprisingly. That's his map with two M's. And then that's his chic. And then, look, this sidewalk, it's like four studs deep. So, yeah, a lot of posability with figures right there. There's a lot of places to put people. We got a crab and that nice metallic color right there. And this bridge just looks gorgeous. We got some Bionicle references down here. Uh, that's a sign showing you to where the crab restaurant is. And then this bridge is also very nice. So you walk up the bridge, it has some of these rounded pieces. These are the paint palette pieces 
in green to show lily pads. That's such a neat building technique. And look at this. This bridge is just so nice. It's pretty wide, also a four by. So you go down this way, you can come up here. It's just gorgeous all over. But um, there's a little alleyway right here, which leads out into this side right here. And we have a whole sort of river. You can see black in the middle because it's deep and then green uh, on that side. That's a very nice technique. And then this little river pathway is very nice. The boat can go all the way through. If you just move his spear out of the way a little bit, then yeah, it can go all the way through. So this was a success in my opinion. And you can see all these holes. They're sort of like drainage. And I think that also gives it a very nice feel. And the Technic pinholes are the Ninjago dock set uh, that came out this year. Uh, it's $230. If you buy that, it connects. I hope to get it soon and do a video on that. So you see some more of the drainage. We have Sweep, a little robot build. Just going to move him. You can see, I like how there's studs and then tiles. So you can really just pose figures all over the place. But uh, speaking of Sweep, we have his charging room right there as a nice door that's a nice technique actually didn't really notice that putting it together but look how they did that just that fine detailing with those sort of sloped pieces but up and in there let's try to get a nice view of this into a sweep sort of charging room uh, once you open that door up here it's just very simple it uses two little assemblies on the sides to show sort of wireless charging two clips to hold his accessories like his broom and his holder and then that shows like all the vitals of him himself and then you are supposed to put him on those little exposed studs right there the boat um i guess we can actually take a look at now it's a pretty nice build it looks to be solar panel that's a nice print to get actually and then uh this building technique is very nice it uses these right here, all on this sort of web piece. And then you just fold them in. And that's a nice traditional style boat. And that is just more detailing where it hides the engine. We got a nice printed piece right here and a little bit of detailing and a pretty uh, not generous space to stand for that figure. But we still have a Riverside Market. And I love this idea how like a boat could come by, stop, get some stuff, and then leaf through here probably head over to ninjago docks but he's selling a crab and a chest piece um two fishes and look at that technique this is genius you might not notice these are crowbars yes crowbars like the minifigure accessory crowbar just angled very nicely to give you this nice awning and the amount of space in there is surprising also four wide yeah there's a lot of space to really fit figures back there and um there are two more sort of floors that go on here this one right here and then this one goes oh sorry i think i've had them reversed i also want to show you how they just connect on simply so with these on you can see how the solar panel works um i bet that sweep is solar paneled uh charged like so and then you can see how the lights sort of come down from these two buildings but just taking a look at them alone right here this is what i call the restaurant it's sort of like a tea shop we have this nice technique used here with all these fin pieces and flaps these minifigure uh heads in that neon orange transparent color a sliding door so that's very nice and it's printed right there to show rice paper and then we have poison ivy or ivy walker star poison ivy is from the dc comics a lot of these nice pieces to make up the railings, a nice rounded part. And then we have just a place for a figure to sit. And then they use this. This is a minifigure, a collectible minifigure stand, a teapot, and two cups. Right there we have a picture. Moving that out of the way, there's just some textured wall back there. And that is the name of the, the designer of this set in the alphabet. Now that is amazing that is sabine wren's hair from the stars rebels line in green so that is a very nice touch and then this place which would be across from her with that little bridge that they have going right here with the railing on and off to one side so that place is right there 
uh, we have the solar panel detailing. This uh, is nice and it's angled outward. And then we have this, and but this is another one of those sliding doors right here. And you can see right here, um, we have a little bed just on the floor. The Japanese style beds, or a lot of the traditional ones, have been very low and close to the ground. And Ninjago is really sort of based off of that. That's nice right there, that sort of detailing. Uh, we got a little uh, sticker right here. A drawer with two, uh, a, ch um, a little dresser with two drawers. The drawers don't open, they're just implemented. And then Good Day Ninjago on the TV right there, which is sort of just Ninjago's little news system they have going for them. And you can see how um, I could imagine that this is uh, Poison Ivy's house and she just walks across. Um, a lot of people in Japan I've seen like have their houses on top of their restaurants. Uh, I forgot to say at the beginning, I love the sort of triangular shape of Ninjaga City, but this is the floor that sits directly above. You can see on these railings just a bunch of advertisement light. And I like getting three boomerang pieces and a printed target piece. A lot of the neon heads continuing, some designing there, a lot of advertisements, a surfboard. So yeah, a lot of really nice detail. This is my favorite floor on the whole thing. We have the concrete shop, an ATM, crab shop, and... A uh, restaurant, sorry, and a film box. So let's start with that. That there says film, and then here it says the shadow of Ronin. So nothing happens when you push it. That's because this door off to the side isn't open. But once you do do that and open it and push this, these come out. Film. So this is a renting film box. There is the shadow of Ronin. These are all done with stickers on those window panes not panes gla uh, the glass part of the window here's a galador poster here's tired of rocking cars forty thousand and here's attack of the brits operator 18 plus from the modular buildings as well now lego uh recommends that you put the shadow run in poster here. you can slide this out to change it out i like putting this here because it's an advertisement you know i feel like people will walk up to the uh, film box, it would be a good place to put ads and then you slide out the movies, but I don't know They suggest you put a movie here Which is weird because then you have like a movie on the front, but then you have an ad inside the movie box I, I don't get how that works, but that is still pretty nice. We got like um, Ninjago Secret Service police just relaxing while Jay chases after a guy and then we have these this sort of staircase downward um and then we'll look at how that connects later. Here we have um, crab, it says right there, or half, less than half the spelling of crab. This crab shop is my favorite place. Look at that. That piece is so nice. It has these window panes, the air conditioning showing, the neon heads, that gold going around it, and that red, that brick, the masonry brick style, Lego bricks, this crab right here, which is a weak point because it's only... Uh, connected by one uh, clip but look at this yeah this is very good it just looks so amazing and fantastically done from the outside the interior though we've got three chairs so you can put figures there some extra space to stand two jumpers on the table uh, we got a banana right there and a golden one in the back we got some cooking tools back there like the pan and gold severin black with and again um generous space usually lego doesn't give us that much space on interiors but a four by now here we have a sorry about that we have a sort of oven now uh uh this is how you cook the frogs and that's a very nice build just look how that looks that's really cool but um uh you can see how the uh crab right there is light colored but I don't know if I have this other way. I don't know. Like, people put in the crab, I think it gains color, like, while you cook it. Although, it could be that it loses color if you have actually cooked crab. I personally don't know which one it is, if it gains or loses. But, you put in the light-colored crab, as you saw right there. And, these crabs are flying everywhere. But, no camera cut. No nothing. Just watch that. A dark colored crab comes out uh, or a more colored one an orange one that is an amazing play feature I love that the design in there so the way this works is that you see this thing that it's sort of 
on the crab is lying in there? Well, there's a little knob with some rubber band action to make sure. And it's so amazing on this knob, they actually use a print that's supposed to be like AC or something on the outside. But just do it with the lid open. You see how this just turns and then pushes whatever's on the inside. So that is definitely a great play feature right there. Uh, we have an ATM and it works. That is amazing. We have this guy with just cash in his hands. He's rich, but this ATM works. Yep, so get you a kind of good view of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lean these down so you can see it, and here's how it works. You just push stuff to get the back, and money is deposited. And yeah, 13 of those, up to 13 of those do come out. I haven't had any trouble with this. There's this little assembly at the back. It has a rubber band, and when you do this, all it's doing is it pulls back, but it all it's doing is um, removing this face right here to the actual assembly. As you can see, um, all it's doing is there's a tile attached to that. So when that tile goes through, the ATM would hold this back, and then it pushes that out. And you see how that tile just slides through. That is a really nice idea to me. They finally did it. They made a working Lego ATM. That is just great to me. I was so happy when I saw that. I was really amazed that Lego actually pulled that off. Like, I've always dreamed of them doing it, but I never thought that it would happen this soon. But here we have a step down to the comic store. As you can see, it says comics in a nice brick assembly. And then nice use of the uh, Black Panther headpiece. Uh, for the white pad there, in white, obviously. Uh, so that's nice to make the O. The door, I believe, yeah, uh, pushes in, yeah, pushes inwards. There it says sale, 40%, 20%, 50%, 70%. Now let's take a look at the back real quickly. I love this, how this drainage pipe right here works and this air condition. But this separates with the drainage pipe, a piece of it. So that's very nice. And in this little assembly, we have this thing that holds this because you build that in a weird way. And then two prints, the Believe poster with the cat on it from the Lego movie. We have a gem right there, a unicorn horn, a frog, and a little laser blaster. But the comic store itself is probably my second favorite thing. We have uh, the ninjas represented all in these new colors. Not all of them are new, but some are. We have one in Sanguine, and that's great, but uh, there we have Cole, Zane, Lloyd, Kai, Jay, and Nia. And then we have the Galador fan, Mother Doomsday right there. He has a little uh, place that was like originally introduced with friends for him to sort of sit behind. Not very big, but this place is small. And now this is great. We have it printed. Yes, not sticker, printed for Starfarer. It's six plus and it looks great. It's a comic book. Four of those are included in the set, four of those prints. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this assembly out. It's the trading card stand. We have Unikitty, some Ninjago ones, some Johnny Thunder reference right there. And then we got a Chima one, so that is nice. And inside, though, there's not a lot of space. I feel like it works well. Like, we have a, a six by six, I believe, tile right here. Just a single piece tile in gray. So that is nice to get a lot of custom people will like to get this. And really, this is just like a custom uh, piece. Uh, this is just a piece gold mine. Here is the second to last floor. That's a very nice design right there. And it's built, like, sideways. And, yeah, it looks very good right there that's um something that i've been avoiding uh because i want to show it at the end but we have some bricks right there and that's more of just a design here though we have the store and this is nice see that angled window and then two window panes we have these guitars right here in just blue some uh more of these pipe pieces for extra detailing but um the way you access this is there's a little ladder going up here and that would uh, lead you to Lloyd's house. But opening this door, we have Ko uh, Koko Misako, I believe her name is, just in there. But as soon as you enter, we have four phones, and those are printed pieces, a frog, 
a light right there. I'll get to that later. We have a skateboard and that can be removed. And then I like how the ramp is sort of on the wall. I think those are supposed to represent golden clothes. We have the Wu Crew uh, training outfits with that piece in gold. And then a blank mini figurehead, another one. But here we have a hat and a scarf piece, which was introduced with the Ninjago blind bags. Moving over, we have four hats in the center. And then there we have some very, very nice pieces. We have uh, this hat in purple, as well as that head, a helmet, a sort of night styled one in yellow, uh, a sort of old Mr. Penguin hat, and then an Orient Expeditions hat. And right there, um, that's probably a shopping bag and a little uh, sort of checkout counter. So that's nice. And then this is gorgeous. Look at this. This is a cherry tree. It's very nice to use. This is a nice piece right here that was recolored. And then we have all these pieces. Now, this to me, I put that sticker on wrong. I don't know. I think that's his caution. But look at the inside. They even did detailing on the inside for the roots. I'm very happy that this construction project never got finished because now we have this gorgeous uh, cherry tree. Now, the last floor um, that we're going to look at, Lloyd's house connects like this, and then the rest of this sushi bar goes on this. I just wanted to note that. So here's the sushi bar area. We have this little assembly. This is like a top floor, so it can hang right here. Uh, this is nice. We have Technic pins uh, with those balls at the end and that nice transparent color. And this is built up nicely with some of these sort of pieces that we've used in the past for launchers. And it's on a ball joint can it, and it can be articulated. It's like uh, one of those ocean animals. This, these are nice pieces, Matt. Uh, but this, these are car doors. 15 car doors. Yeah, car doors. That is an amazing building technique. And then I like how these sort of columns go down, some tiling. I wish we do have rounded tiles. I wish they had one here, but sushi signs right there with different fish. Uh, we have a little sushi menu right there, a radio tower right there, probably receiving signals of all sorts. We have a table for one and then a table, another table for one and then a table for two. And then the sushi bar with three stools. We got Kai right there. A little place for the chef to cut sushi. This turns, so that is nice. Though it does get clogged, I'll admit this. But this is a very nice build. You know, it has all the sushi on it. You can have some figures sitting. And it actually scales well to figures. But you can see how clogged it gets. You know, you just have to spin the other way. So that is something a bit disappointing. I'm gonna install this. You see the stairs up to it, and under there, there's a chef hat and a mustache and we'll get back to that later but here we have the bathroom with another sliding door some of those sort of blades right there too bad it's open right there but in this all that's going on here is yeah a japanese style bathroom we have a little wow why is that open that's weird i think uh it's supposed to be a mirror right there a little sink a little air freshener that's done nicely and then a japanese style toilet down in there and now we have one uh thing before lloyd's house it's this it's sort of the main radio center it looks very nice this is just a bunch of extra detail we have these rounded pieces and then we even have fence rounded fence pieces in there and then to top that this is built up very nicely these are sideways and then these are done up with clips and all in sand green here we have this light and some more antennae so that is the sushi whole section of the topmost floor and Lloyd's house, which I saved for last because I love this build. It's so adorable. The door opens outwards. Uh, those are just random designs. No references as far as I can tell. Now they've used this building technique a lot so far. The same one up here. This is built up backwards. Yeah, these are the Technic pieces, just backwards. These right here. So yeah, uh, that's ingenious. But we have a little antennae right there, so he probably gets good reception. And the whole roof peels off. Cramped, I know. But this comes off to allow you to get more, but that's Coco Misako and Lloyd's double bed. This is Lloyd's bed because he has a Bruce Lee reference poster right there. And down in there, we have a little uh, Garmadon, a uh, family picture with Garmadon, Sensei Wu, and Coco Misako. Here we have a little video game, I guess, for Lloyd to play on, some a car, 
And by the way, the micro figures here in the set, you get one extra. So you saw six of the comic books uh, set, one here. You get seven extra micro figures. That's great. Uh, we have some books done there nicely. GDN, Good Day Ninjago, a chair and a table, a microwave and a desk. I feel like that, I and a drawer, sorry. I feel like this is done very well just for the limited um, space it received. I still feel like this on its own could just be its own set because this is done so great. And there's one more secret I almost forgot about. <laughs> this suit is right up here in the roof, so it really just looks down on him, and that's great. So I'm going to take that out because i got to review this with the figures, and there's sort of this space in the roof. There is one last thing, and that is the elevator system. Now, it would be hard for me to show it on camera, but the elevator does go all the way up to the top, and sadly, it just goes straight up. Like, you know, you can lift it off of the trap, and it's not remote control power, it's manually powered. Manually. So, you can fit like a couple of figures, I'd say one more, and then you just pull up, basically. And yeah, that's all it does, basically. So, you got a little tooth gear going in through these tracks. And then we even have some piping down in there. So yeah, that's it for the build itself. Let's take a look at the figures. Figures. Let's start with uh, Koko Misako and Lloyd's mom. First off, um, yep, I've been using this one. And this is the one from the collectible minifigure series. So I had the wrong Misako up on in the review. Good thing this is the actual one that comes with the set. Let's see how many figure uh, people had that. But... Uh, she's okay, you know, I think that uh, none of the pieces for the torso and legs are exclusive to her. Back torso printing is looking good though. I like Lloyd's hair a lot and the jacket print is nice as well as the leg printing. He has an alternate, oh yeah, there's his alternate face for a second. I thought he didn't. So here's his sort of, I don't know what how to describe that face. And here's his other one, very similar. Here's her winking face, that's so adorable. And then her first front face here we have Lloyd's suit and Kai Kai's holding a croissant his printing is looking nice and he even has side arm printing too bad that that white isn't applied so, so well and Kai's hair in the Ninjago movie just represents fire so much just imagine that in a transparent orange yeah that definitely reminds me of fire has his little scar and here's his alternate more mean face I'm surprised that Lloyd wasn't a huge difference from his first face and speaking of Lloyd his suit itself is not exclusive the same one in all the other sets though the gold printing is looking nice also signed arm printing and look at that that nice texturing right there and back printing and uh, his head is just a transparent black head as you can see or let me remove a piece right here yeah transparent black head and that's also nice to get finishing off the ninjas we have a ninja in actual armor J and then a ninja to be or a ninja wannabe so the leg printing in bronze is looking very good for Jay he even has that on the sort of hip piece and then I like the printing on the torso and then the back printing is nice and I just love his helmet more here is one face and here's his alternate more mean face here's his here let's start to get that piece off it's the two-piece helmet that was actually originally introduced with uh, this line sorry about that my stand just broke but it was introduced with this line of the Lego Ninjago movie and he'll, here is his alternate face which is also fitting I love the freckles and his little weapon is just built up but I love this guy he's like the biggest green ninja fan I think they call him he has uh, Lloyd from the Ninjago movie there's the uh, director's son's name the designer sorry and this is a really nicely done figure in my opinion he even has an alternate face here we have this figure who's super rich and then mother doomsday right there he has two hundred dollar bills i love that printing on uh the torso for both of these the galador reference is nice uh prints on the pant is okay for this one i like how the, uh, the his sunglasses are reflecting i like mother doomsday here but i also really like this rich guy as you can see you know alternate faces but then we even have printing on the back and i believe that is the galador logo so yeah these are great 
more figures. We have a built-up Imprello with one of those Setsebu hat pieces and a Flickfire missile base. And that's a nice little assembly. No leg printing for this one. Though good torso printing, nice glasses and nice wavy hair. We have the newly introduced pale colored uh, crab, which I believe is still exclusive to this at the time of the recording of this video. Nice uh, torso print for Severn Black. Even the back has all the sort of crab designs and there's the alternate face for this one the head is an exclusive and Severn Black you saw under the bathroom there was a mustache and a hat and what they have you do is that's him when he's the chef um, for these sort of sorry about that that's him when he's the chef for the crab restaurant but Severn Black does double and I think this is very smart and I have that mustache piece uh, upside down and the only reason I'm not cutting this is I sort of wanted to show you how this works out so you apply the mustache piece which is very nice just fits around the neck and this and then he doubles as your sushi chef so yeah that's nice and it changes up the look here we have a police and a bad guy and the prints on this are okay we just get so much police stuff although you know kids love the police stuff the younger Lego crowd and then this headpiece I guess is nice but i like getting him one of garmadon's henchmen uh the printing looks very alike to the other ones but look at that water piece do you see that it's all shiny i don't think that it's just an error it's not a regular water piece it has all that nice shine to it it may be an error though and the uh, piece just came out right wrong but that is nice and i think a lot of people just overlook that piece uh, I like the scar right there, that hat in that dark blue, and back torso prints for both of these. Moving on to the more traditional figures, we have two sort of travelers slash fishermen. Uh, prints for both of these are looking quite nice, like the fish right there, the staff build, the spear, and looks like he's just speared himself a fish. This one's obviously older, he has a hat, and in his backpack he's carrying a frog, which has a stud to help it sort of in there more. And this is a very neat, there's like barely any torso print under that, but this is very neat. The hat disconnects to one of those pieces, so you take the hair piece off, and you can have him on with the hat too, which has a nice look to it. And here's the back torso print. Here are the last two figures. This one is okay. She has a frog, nice hair piece, no back um, face, or some back printing with some dirt, but add some more dirt on the front but this i love this this is ivy walker instead of using one of those skirt pieces like those far, proper like cape material skirt pieces they chose to go with printing which is good plate isn't applied as well as i'd like because it's over green it's sort of it's supposed to be that white but it isn't but just look at that printing that is phenomenal it's so amazing and even some very good back printing and a nice back expression right there so very good uh, figure done with this one and lastly, he's here sweep. He has this sort of broom. He has uh, this uh, piece right here that I'd imagine you press a button and picks up trash. Don't know the official name. It has these leg pieces, which I believe are new. This base piece, which I believe is new. And then the arms sort of connect like so. And then he uses like something in the Black Panther line, one of those guns that Shuri uses for his head. And then this nice little helmet piece. So yeah, he's good. I think he's a nice character to get. So here is the box. And now uh, a lot of times LEGO does this. I don't believe it's intentional. They're not trying to cheat you or anything. But they do uh, something where like the box is double the size of the thing after you build it. And that mainly happens because like um, sometimes a lot of the pieces go into the inside that you don't see. But here, the box is actually like the same size, I believe, as the Ninjago City. It says, boat does not float. I love all the people at the bottom. And honestly, this set is great. 4,867 pieces for $50 is a good, uh, for $500, sorry. $500 is a good deal. Oh wait, it's not $500. 4,867 pieces feels like a $500 set. Even the complexity of this. It's a $300 set. That is great. Only, it's like we saved $200. Usually a thousand pieces goes for around $100. This is 4867 and it only goes for 300 This really just feels like a $500 set. So it's definitely well done. And even if it was $500 and not $300, even if the price wasn't as good as it is, 
I still think it was worth the five hundred dollars. Uh, sorry about that tape down there. Uh, when I took it through the airport, they checked it and opened it, and then they really just put the tape in there. But yeah, I definitely recommend this set if you can afford it. It is a pretty big and expensive, but still, you know, it feels like it's half off what it should be. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. Figures are great, although I do wish they included all the ninjas, or at least between Ninjago City and the Ninjago Docks, they included all the ninjas, but sadly they didn't. But that's it for this review. Hope you like it. And by the way, check out that one where I go through all the references. Subs uh, please subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.